Meet Dick Whittington, real life medieval mayor of London and favoured pantomime figure, best known for his spotty bindle and companion cat, also apparently for being a thoroughly gorgeous and leggy blonde. Dick Whittington, it's said, believed that London streets were paved with gold. A ridiculous notion, only fit for fairy tales. Or is it? To delve into this, we need to fast forward 200 years to after Dickie Boy was Mayor of London. Elizabeth I sits on the throne and we have fallen out with Roman Catholic Europe in a big way. Now what makes this even worse is that Spain, who sits at the heart of this Catholic Europe, controls all of the major shipping and trade routes. So if little England wants to get access to the goods and produce of Cathay or the Far East, the really fashionable things, they need to go around Spain or through them. Welcome to the scene, Martin Frobisher. He was one of Elizabeth's privateers, which is actually a polite word for pirate. Here he is looking majestic in his absolutely enormous breeches. You can see he's holding a rapier and has a richly enamelled pistol. He is a man of action, a soldier. The globe behind him, however, positions him as an adventurer. In 1576, Martin Frobisher decided that he was going to find the Northwest Passage, a route to the east that was not controlled by Spain, that they had yet to traverse. The Northwest Passage sits in the northern seas over Canada. It's mostly an ice lake, and at this time particularly would have been intraversable for most, if not all, of the year. There is a reason why Spain hadn't got there first. They had better, easier, safer routes to get to where they wanted. In 1576, Martin Frobisher began the first of three voyages in search of the Northwest Passage. Unfortunately, in the first case, he became waylaid and ended up landing on a island that became known as Baffin Island. While there, for some reason, he spotted a piece of black rock on the floor, picked it up and took it home for a souvenir, much like I imagine we might take home a shell or a pebble from a beach we visited while abroad. Upon his return home, the black rock has made its way into the hands of a gentlewoman, unknown in identity. Apparently, she was the wife of one of the adventurers. Now, for some reason, best known to herself, she decided to burn this piece of ore and then quench it in vinegar. And she was surprised to find that it glistered with a bright marquisite of gold. This was no ordinary black rock. This was gold, of course. Assayers began to take interest in the rock. Investors began to invest in future voyages. And the search for the Northwest Passage began to fall by the wayside and in certain cases be forgotten entirely by those who were pushing for further voyages. On Frobisher's second trip out, he brings back even more black ore. They begin to mine it. And by the third journey out there, he has brought back to England between 1,500 and 2,000 tonnes of this black ore. Now, the tests are ongoing. They're trying to find silver and gold quantities, where one assayer says, yes, I found silver and gold. The next will say, this is valueless, there's nothing here. This goes on for a period of years, and Frobisher undertakes his three voyages in this time. People are funding these voyages, no longer for the Northwest Passage, but for the mining of this gold-rich black ore. Why were they so convinced that this black ore was gold? Well, 
of course they'd had people who tested it and said there's gold in them there rocks there's silver in the rock but I think also there was a national desire to meet match rival supersede Spain's success in the new world England was watching their enemy get rich on the gold and silver of the Americas. Also it enabled the investors in the voyage, which included Queen Elizabeth, to believe that not only would they see their money back, but they would see it come back 10, 20, 50, 100 fold. There was even talks of setting up mining colonies on Baffin Island to ship even more of this black rock back to England. Of course, you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't remember from my history lessons this enormous cache of gold coming into England in the 1570s. Well, there's a very good reason for that. Just two years after Martin Frobisher had set out on his first voyage in search of the Northwest Passage, the final results had come in. This black rock didn't contain any gold or any sufficient quantity of gold or any sufficient quantity of silver. It was worthless black rock. The glistering sparkle was iron pyrite, literally fool's gold. Current estimates state that over £25,000 have been invested in these three voyages, £4,000 of which was Elizabeth I's and she was nothing if not parsimonious. The phrase, tight as two coats of paint, springs to mind. Certainly, in the aftermath of the voyages, Frobisher's reputation was severely damaged. It took a long time for him to rehabilitate himself. And one of his largest backers, a man called Michael Locke, lost everything and spent a number of years in debtor's prisons because of the failure of these voyages. But what happened to those 200 or some tons of black rock that Martin Frobisher brought back with him. Well, here's some of it. It was used to rebuild a wall in Dartford. But the rumour goes that the rest of it was used in a process called road metalling for the streets of London. The coating by which essentially we tarmac our pavements and roads. So in that respect, Although it might only be fool's gold, for a time at least, London streets were paved with gold. Hope to see you all soon. And while you're here, please like, subscribe, click the little bell icon next to it so you know when I've uploaded. And if you've got any questions, please leave them below in the comment. I'll also be linking my social media. Thank you. See you soon. Bye bye.